Hey there, nation. Welcome to the show where we help you to save miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of Back to the Primitive. It is our limited series that is dedicated now to the building painting of our studio's 3,000 point Lizardmen army is what we're going to do for this one. Now, in case you're wondering, originally this series, Back to the Primitive, was a series that was dedicated to the building painting of a 2,000-point Bone Splitter army for our, our Warhammer Age of Sigmar. The thing, though, is that um, as we were playing Age of Sigmar, my friends and I just couldn't get to it, get into it anymore. We just didn't care for it too much, and we decided we liked Warhammer Fantasy Battle the most. And so because my gaming group and I felt that way, we decided to stop playing Age of Sigmar and just go back to playing Warhammer Fantasy Battle, because that was the game that we enjoyed playing. So because of that, I kind of ended that series early just because I wasn't going to make any more progress onto my Bone Splitters army. So what ended up happening is that because I had all these Bone Splitters, as you can see the painted miniatures here are my Bone Splitters, um, they just kind of collected dust for the most part of my army uh, in, my, in my studio. Uh, we weren't using them for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Uh, my buddy Brother Grimm didn't want to use them for his Orcs and Goblins army that we have for our battle reports. So they just kind of, like I said, sat in a corner just kind of gathered dust for the most part. Well, what ended up happening is that at my local gaming store, this guy was selling a bunch of used uh, Lizardmen secondhand at my local game store. And I was able to get them all for a really, really good price. And so because I decided to combine those Lizardmen miniatures with these, uh, with some leftover goblins that I had, as well as some leftover, as well as the bone splitters I had as well, and I created this hybrid Lizardmen backslash Savage Orc Orc and Goblin Army that we are calling the Lizards of Waz is what we're calling it. So as you can see here, it's an amalgamation of all kinds of different stuff. It is a it's a hot mess, but I love it because it thematically it's just really really cool. So as you can see, we have units here of like skinks mixed with goblins mixed with orcs. We got some savage orcs mixed with some with a troglodon here as you can see right here, as well as some lizardmen and some lizardmen saurian warrior conversions that I did real quick with some leftover. Uh, uh, leftover heads that I was able to get as well as um, some savage orc bodies. We got some source warriors located in this unit here with all these bone splitters. We have another unit of skinks here with goblins as you can see. We got a carnosaur which is really really cool as well. We got uh, some more lizardman source cab with some bone splitter uh, big stabbers thrown in there in the mix. We got some pterodons with some night goblins riding the pterodons as you can see here. And we also got a oh, part of a Bastilodon kit is what we have here as well. So yeah, this is going to be the Lizards of Waz. And it's our the, the names that we have I have picked up for these guys are ridiculous. And just because um, I know this army is a hot mess. And so taking it very seriously is not going to be the objective when we put this army together. And you'll tell why when I actually go through the list with you guys and actually talk about what makes up the army and stuff. So yeah, I was able to get a lot of Lizardman miniatures for pretty cheap what ended up happening. What ended up happening is that this guy at the local gaming store that I have, he had a bunch of Lizardmen that he wanted to sell. Uh, the Lizardmen he wanted to sell were, I think it was a Connoisseur, and he had some leftover sprue from that to make a Troglodon, uh, leftover sprue from that. And he already built, uh, I don't know who this character is, I think he's a special character with uh, a, a Saurus Old Blood special character was what he had there as well. He had some skinks, as you can see here, some bits of some skinks there. He also has some lizardmen over here as well with some leftover pieces. Some of them are missing, for example, these shields. For example, let me go and zoom in real quick. So like the shields on the uh, Source Warriors are missing, so I replaced those with some leftover Savage Orc shields that I had, for example. He also had a bunch of skinks that he had, uh, that he had left over as well. Some skinks are missing some arms and stuff. That's what he had from there. And he got that kit completely built. And uh, he had some Saurus Cav. He had like eight of them. That's what he had of those, right? He also had some Pterodons, but also if you notice, the Pterodons were also missing things. Like for example, the Skink Riders he didn't have for whatever reason. And like one of these Pterodons is missing legs, for example. So he had that. Um, he also had a Bastilodon that he had built as an engine of the gods. And he also had some Skinks missing for that. He had some Skinks, as you can see here, a Skink Priest. He had some skinks looking in this unit as well, and then of course he had some uh, source wares that I was able to make some. I uh, made him make some source wares using uh, some leftover heads he had. He had some source wares over there as well. He also had pits of a sprue to make a, a skink priest, I think, as well as this bit of troglodon here as well. And the crazy part about it, like he had all these bits and pieces of things, but not like full completed anything. And he wanted to like he wanted like 200 bucks for it. It was kind of ridiculous. He like wanted 200 dollars for it. 
You know, it's kind of funny because I was like, no way, I'm not paying 200 bucks. You're missing a lot of stuff from these miniatures as well as sprues. There's no way that's going to happen, right? And because of that, I wasn't even going to pay 100 bucks for it. I was like, there's no freaking way I'm paying 100 bucks for that either. So him and I went back and forth and haggled a bit. I basically talked about like how originally all these guys were on round bases is what they were. So I told him, like, hey, look, I got to cut them off the round bases and I got to glue them onto square bases. So that's going to cost me some time as well as some aggravation. At the same time, you're missing bits and pieces of skink as well as source warriors in your sprues. So I'm not paying half price for that. That. Not to mention, you don't have like all the parts necessary for some of the crew, like the skinks on these pterodons, and like these pterodons are kind of like mixed up between different types of creatures. I'm not sure what they are, and then you have no crew for that thing, so I'm not playing half price. So what ended up happening is you wanted two hundred dollars for the lot. I managed to get it for sixty bucks, so that part was awesome. So I managed to talk him down to that. And the funny part about it was the reason why I agreed to it is because he was telling me about this army he was trying to sell. He's been trying to offload it for like two years. And so I told him, I was like, yeah, you can take 65 bucks now or you can wait forever how long it takes for you to sell bits and pieces of it. And so uh, <laughs> I guess he didn't want to wait another year or two or whatever to sell his stuff. So he sold to me for 65 bucks in cash. Plus I was bringing cash on board, so that usually helps out as well. Paid him in cash and I was able to get these guys for a really cheap price. So that part was awesome. Talked him down for 200 to 65 bucks. It was great. And so, of course, he didn't know that I was going to take those models and mix them up with my, my bone splitters to make the Lizards of Waz. And that's exactly what I did. As you can see, it looks really, really awesome as well. So it's kind of rough looking with all the different bits and pieces, but when I get done painting it all, it's gonna look really fantastic. It's gonna look really epic as well. So that's pretty much how I got the miniatures for these guys. Like I said before, most of it's orcs and goblins. Sorry, that's my chair squeaking. Uh, I got mostly orcs and goblins in here from left orcs and goblins that I've had over the years, just collecting dust. And I combine those together to make uh, the Lizardmen. Because Lizardmen are pretty much laid out like orc goblins. You have like your source warriors, which are like your orcs. You have your skinks, which are like goblins, so it works out well. Now, narrative speaking, what's supposed to be that the army of the Lizard of Waz ended up happening is that a battle barge of orcs and goblins shipwrecked upon the coast of Lustria, which is where the Lizardmen live at. And those orcs and goblins converted over to the worship of the Great Old Ones alongside the Lizardmen, and they decided to join up and by listening to the slan, and that's basically what they decided to do. They decided to forsake Gork and Wark and basically threw their lot in with the Lizardmen. And that's pretty much the idea behind it is what I kind of went from the narrative on this. Plus, you know, you got the Savage Orcs, they look really tribal, and so, so do the Source Wars. So, you know, it's a good fix. It's a good mix. And that's where it came from. So let's go on and talk about exactly what the army consists of. So first of all, we have a unit of 40, uh, sorry, not 40 skinks, of 36 skinks. Sorry, not 36 skinks, sorry, 28 skinks. There we go. Um, as you can see here, we have a unit of 28 skinks, and we also got three uh, croxagores. So the big stabs in this unit represent the croxagores for that unit as well. So we got three croxagores as well as the rest of the skinks. These guys will be armored javelins. They also have poison attacks as well. We also have a skink priest. He's located there as well. That guy's name is Slag is his name. He's a little two wizard. Lore of beasts. And he's got the cube of darkness. That's just going to end up happening. So that's my first unit. This unit is called House Slytherin. Is the name of this unit because you know Slytherin, you know Harry Potter, that kind of thing. Like I said, this army is like a Joker army, so I just kind of like, you know, gave all these units goofy names. So next up here we have, of course, is our Temple Guard. This unit is the Temple Guard. We're calling it the Guacamole Guard. That's what the name of the uh, unit is because why not? It'll be Temple Guard with full command. It's like a unit of thirty of these guys, thirty-six of these guys. What's going to happen? I'm oh, sorry, not 36, 35. And inside of it, I decided to put this troglodon in there to represent my slan. This is Kermit the Slan, is what his name is. So as you can see, we're kind of going with the swimming, uh, the swimming troglodon uh, conversion that I did real quick. The guy who sold me this kit, he had the head as well as the fin of the troglodon creature, as well as the little uh, slan major, uh, the little uh, skink priest that came with it. So what I decided to do is I decided to uh, surf the net. And I found this really cool conversion where somebody looked like a troglodon was swimming. So what he did is that he just put some green stuff on the flanks of it to make it look like uh, scales. I know my scales look like giant pillows because I'm not horrible at sculpting, but you know, it works, it saves me money, right? So I'm gonna make it look like this thing is swimming. Now, of course, these bases for these uh, Savage Orcs, I got to change of the base work on that to represent its more swampy look, to make it look like this thing is sw swimming in the Temple Guard along the banks of a pool. And that's what I decided to do for our leader, Kermit the Slan. And that's the Slan, and that's the little cherry thing he'll be writing. In fact, uh, when I glue him on, just go on top of it like this. Let me see here. It'll go like on top of it like that. And that's the plan of going with that. So the Guacamole Guard as well as Kermit the Slan. Our next unit's called the Saurus, like the book. <laughs> and it's just a unit of 40 Saurus Warriors with spears in full command. 
that's what's going to make up this unit. So we've got a huge mob orcs that's going to represent that unit, the source, and I got some source warriors mixed up in there as well. And then we have another unit of 40 skinks called the Karma Chameleons, kind of like the song by Culture Club. It's going to have 39 skinks in there. We got uh, uh, what you call it? three uh, three Coxagor. So I got you know some 40 millimeter bases. I put two Savage Orcs. I left over and then of course I put my little troll in there from the Battle Skull Pass. And this little guy here with the little moon, he's going to be our other uh, Skink Priest. That's going to be, um, what's his name, a Slag. It's going to be level 1 uh, Lore of Heavens with the uh, Dispel Scroll, which is a Scroll Caddy. And up here we have our Source Old Blood. These guys are named as Gatorade and Powerade. It's their name, so Gator-Aid and then Power-Aid, so Powerade and Gatorade. Carnosaur with an old blood on it with, you know, your typical magic items and stuff. So that's going to be really cool. This model is really, really neat. The guy actually built it to be like a special character from uh, 8th edition. I think he was like this guy who had like a gauntlet that shot beams of light out of it. So that's what he built this guy to be. So that's perfectly fine because I can say where he is. In the back here of Unit 10, Source Cav called the Jurassic Jousters, what the name of the unit is. The guy had 8 of these Source Cav. I don't know if he had 10 or whatever he had, but he had 8 of these things. So luckily he had the full command assembled and he had like a mixture of weapons in the back. So that was going really fine. And that was another real talking point. I told him, I was like, hey man, you got these things all mixed up. There's no one weapon with it. So, and he had no leftover sprue to make anything with it. So I said, I'm not paying full price for that. So that's ended up happening. And I threw in two uh, big stabbers to make a look at these guys running around with these guys stabbing things. Because I'm the king of proxying. I don't care. After that, we have the Charizards. The Charizards are a unit of three uh, ter uh, pterodons, I think is what they're called. I think this one was supposed to be a Ripodactyl, I think. I don't know what it is. But like I said, like this one's like a Ripodactyl. This one is like a pterodon. This guy is uh, like the special character Tic-Tac-Toe, I think. So this the guy who previously owned this built it. So that's what he did. And then he had like some kind of weird thing over here. I'm not sure, but the legs were missing on it. So, like I said, another talking point. He had no leftover sprue, so like, once again, another discount on that. I put two netters that I had left over to put on the top of these guys, because these guys are gonna be armed with fire leech bolas. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna paint up the nets to make it look like they're on fire, because why not? And then we got, of course, the tic-tac-toe special character, but he's just gonna be the unit leader. That's all he's gonna be. And then lastly, we have the Bulbasaur. The Bulbasaur is gonna be our Bastillodon with a Sotek, engine of Sotek, or engine of the gods, or some it, it's the thing that shoots a laser beam, is what the other one's going to be right there. So, yeah, that is my 3,000 point lizards, lizards of a waz. That's W A A A A G H Z, lizard of waz, is what this army is going to be called. So, yeah, it's going to be goofy, it's goofy looking, and I don't care. I just like the idea of orcs converting over to the old ones and listening to the Slam Mage Priest. That or the, maybe the Slam Mage Priest, maybe he's mentally controlling all of them like zombies. I don't know. You know, it's a goofy army and I like it. It just seems like a very orky thing to do, you know. That or they're like lizardmen looted orcs. I don't know. One of those two. But that's an up happening. Either the lizardmen joined up with the orcs or the orcs joined up with the lizardmen. You know, I'll let your imagination go with that one. But yeah. So this is the next project that I'm paying up for Warhammer Fantasy Battle. I was about to get a bunch of these Lizardman models for cheap, so I'm super excited to see exactly how this project goes. I'm looking forward to painting these things. It's gonna be bright, it's gonna be colorful. I got a lot of base work I gotta do on these Savage Orcs because I wanna make it look like they're walking in swamps instead of uh, the, the dirt they originally planned for those guys. So I got my work planned out for me there. But this should go pretty quickly. A vast majority of this army is already painted already, so that's kinda nice. I gotta do some base work again, but that's okay, that's, that's easy to do. So it should go pretty quick. I usually get an army done in about three months, three to four months. So I'm assuming it's going to take me about the same amount of time to do this one as well. So yeah, this is Lizards of Waz, and that's going to be our episode for Back to the Primitive. A slight change in format for Back to the Primitive, because now we're focusing on Lizardmen. So that's good to do for this week, guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. You guys' input is valuable to us as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's a good do for this one, guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.